Now, what can you really say about Adventure Time? It's pretty much one of the greatest and most influential modern cartoons ever made. What started out as a silly and nonsense kid show had truly evolved into a genuinely compelling series, which has great and inventive character development, engaging storytelling and lore, and a feeling of maturity that lies so much deeper than what it seems at first glance. The show wanted to mature with its audience, as it slowly went and made more compelling and deeper storylines and character growth, to the point where even the most recent series, Fiona and Cake, is pretty much an adult show and hits the series to a much darker direction that's still fantastic and fun. It's really a testament to this series that it has lasted over 10 years now and it's still telling new and compelling stories where you still want more and more. Honestly, I think it's a practically perfect series. I can't think of many things seriously wrong with it, but there is one exception. The characterization of Princess Bubblegum. It's definitely a hot topic. Many people completely hate her and others will defend her with their life. Most arguments just seem to be, is she evil? But I think it goes beyond that. I think it actually leads to a serious problem with the series that her characterization becomes so inconsistent as it so continually gives her serious character flaws and horrible actions, but never actually wants to pay it off or do anything with it in a serious way. Despite what she does, the show constantly treats her as someone you should like or root for, despite the fact that she is rarely called out for her flaws and actions, making it for a very frustrating experience for a character who never really seems to grow. But I'm going to have to really get into it. So I'm going to go through all of Princess Bubblegum's major negative characterization and analyze how it affected herself and the show. And there's quite a lot to talk about. Also, if you're one of those people who look at her doing horrible things and go, Oh, she's just a gritchy, gatekeeping girl boss, then just please shut up. Nope, 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 stop talking, go to jail. I also want to say, I don't want to do this. I did not make this channel to be negative. I love Adventure Time, but this is a very hot topic and I want to give my own insight on the situation. And I want to clarify, no I did not watch or get any insight from other videos on this topic. A lot of what I go over is pretty much my actual feelings on the episodes when they came out and were not influenced by other people. And let me just say, for 80% of the show, she's fine. She doesn't do anything directly bad, she's just usually someone who helps out, proactive in the plot, or just kind of there. But it's that last 20% that just goes bananas. But, let's go to the beginning. Ironically, the first episode of the show is pretty much all about her. A zombie apocalypse plot is weird for your first episode, but hey, that's adventure time for you. In these early episodes, Princess Bubblegum is usually just a very kind and just ruler of her kingdom, beloved by all. She has a bit of a, well, bubbly personality, a bit airheaded and eccentric, but also very intelligent and can get lost in her own thoughts. Though occasionally a more cynical side can leak out, so she's not just all sweet. She does come across as very royal, fitting well into the princess role with her mannerisms and other duties she has. She's surprisingly likable here and doesn't do anything really wrong. Well, I guess the Duke had to be super unhinged, but to be fair it was a very bad situation she's in, so it's kind of understandable that she would crack here. There is one notable exception in the first season, and it's near the end of it, with the episode What Have You Done? So Bubblegum gets Finn and Jake to kidnap the Ice King without telling them why. They take them back to a weirdly dark and diseased candy kingdom where the princess tells them to put Ice King in the dungeon and prepare to make him howl in pain. But she clarifies he didn't do anything but they are still going to pretty much beat him. The two are convinced that he did something wrong but Ice King clarifies he didn't do anything and it makes the two reluctantly let him go since they can't capture and potentially torture someone innocent. When the princess returns, she prepares to physically beat him, and she's furious to see him gone, and makes this amazing face, and then she finally clarifies what happened. The Ice King used some ice magic to snow in the candy kingdom to impress her, but this accidentally created a plague that the only cure she found was to make him howl in pain. Another key thing is, she first went and tried and plead with him to cure her people, but he's much too dense to catch on, which made PB forced to kidnap him and torture him to cure her people. But the thing is, Finn calls her out on it. He says he can't beat an innocent man. It's against his hero code. And another important thing is that PB acknowledges it. She says he knows it's cruel, but she has no other choice and she feels remorse and starts to break down. Now this is seriously crucial later on, but notice how each character has reacted to the situation. Finn calls out PB's cruel plan, even if it seems to be the only option, and PB actually feels bad about what she's doing and admits it's wrong. But to her, there's no other choice. She didn't do this with malice, but just a sense of duty. 
and later on you'll see just how this attitude is non-existent going forward, and they did it in the first season, so keep this in the back of your mind as we go further. Now luckily everything works out fine in this story, so season 1 was pretty good at making Princess Bubblegum likable and understandable even in her worst moments, and it pretty much goes on in season 2. A lot of her involvement in these plots involve her using Finn and Jake for a particular task. I've seen people say she pretty much manipulates Finn to do her dirty work and doesn't really care for him, but no, I do not agree. We see Finn will help anyone and everyone who needs it, even other kingdoms, so Finn and Jake would help her regardless. It just she's also a good friend of them as well, and Pee Wee does care about the two, though maybe a little bit in a weird way, but no, it's not manipulation at all. Yeah, Finn had an obvious crush on her, but it's not like she's aware and uses it against him. I mean, Season 2 did end with her becoming 13 after the Litz's possession, with Finn finally have a chance to get into an actual romantic relationship with her, and her seemingly also wanting to as well, until it gets completely dropped in the next episode. Well, okay, that is a bit unfair, as it does result in Finn's eventual breakdown at the end, with his one chance of happiness with her gone, and him being so young and alone, effectively, it's understandable. Honestly, it's really unfair to call him like a simp because it's just a really rough situation. And yeah, season 3 really doesn't have any notable Princess Bubblegum actions. I mean, she does raise the dead again, but hey, every single cartoon has a character raise the dead, it's mandatory. But yeah, nothing too notable. Until season 4. Season 4 is where the show started to change up Princess Bubblegum. It's not super drastic like we see later, but there are hints to a darker part of her. Now, I can understand why they might want to. I guess they want to break away from the usual princess stereotype and make her more interesting. Now, she's still not evil, but she's starting to push some boundaries, notably in the episode Goliad. So after her near death with the Lich, Princess Bubblegum wishes she could live forever to take care of her kingdom, but since she can't, she makes a candy sphinx from her DNA named Goliad to serve as her heir with powerful psychic abilities and immortality. But Goliad is pretty quickly drawn into Megalomania, believing that since they are more powerful than anyone else, they can and should have the right to control everyone with an iron fist. So PV thinks Goliad is a failure and too dangerous as she should be disassembled and then try again. Which, if you really think about it, is pretty messed up. This was supposed to be her heir and surrogate daughter, but in less than a day she finds them a failure and wants to kill them and try again without much effort in trying to change them. Though it's not long before Goliath goes completely manic and tries to take the kingdom by force. Though considering she was apparently going to be killed, maybe it's more understandable. Also, it's concerning how quickly Goliath turns to megalomania as if it's literally a part of Princess Bubblegum's DNA. Now you may say that has nothing to do with DNA. But that's literally how the conflict was resolved, since Bubblegum uses Finn's DNA on a new sphinx, Stormo, which has his heroics and is able to fight Goliath to a standstill. This episode was concerning if you think about it too hard, but it's not too bad. We get a bit more in Princess Cookie, when Baby Snaps takes the convenience store hostage, wanting PB's crown. PB refuses to give it up, which is kind of iffy since it's just a crown, it's not like he'll get any title from it. I don't even think it's really that valuable, does he have any extras? I mean, I guess that's the gem of power, but that wasn't a thing until the season finale. You are problem, the problem princess! Oh buddy, you have no idea, just wait! Finn and Jake offer to use espionage to stop the hot situation, which Jake really wanted to be a mailman, but PB insisting that he's a disguise himself as a milkman, which really bothers Jake. He even uses it when he tries to talk Baby Snaps down, that he's really unhappy with how the princess treats him. And after replicating a conversation with a good chunk of the Adventure Time fanbase, Isn't she just the worst? Wait, you hate Princess Bubblegum too? Get out of here! Oh yeah, man, she's the worst! Baby Snaps tells him his story, where as a lonely orphan, the princess visited and brought joy to the kids, with Baby Snaps wanting to be a princess like her to bring joy to people. But she giggles at him, leading him to feel like she was mocking him and causing him to hate her and forcing him to do this to get what he wants. Jake pities them and tries to get the heat off him by negotiating with the princess, but the princess makes it clear that once this is resolved, she will put him in the dungeon for the rest of his life, which is pretty messed up considering Baby Snaps didn't really hurt anyone. It kind of comes across more personal for him wanting the crown, which all this would be a really easy thing to give up as he really wanted to stop the conflict. Honestly, this episode kind of hits me in the feels in some ways. I'll never be a princess. At least for a moment. You help me feel like a princess. But luckily Jake did seem to get to the princess, as after Baby Snaps has gifted his own crown to be the princess of the grasslands. Again, Princess Bubblegum is pushing some moral boundaries, but it is still within reason. Though I want to talk about Burning Low, the episode that cements Finn and Flame Princess's relationship and also ending in a cap of love triangle. 
Now, I want to say any kind of PB is just exploiting Finn's love for her for her own means claim should be stopped by this episode, since PB didn't really care if Finn had a relationship with anyone else, nor cared if he loved her. She just cared about Flame Princess accidentally destroying the planet. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is this little scene. Collecting taxes. You guys weren't home, so I let myself in. Oh. No, don't you talk about your candy tax. That's why I can't save for upgrades in this game, you greedy. But enough of my video game drama. The fact that she pretty much breaks into their house and steals their money and is barely acknowledged is eyebrow raising to say the least. Like, the grasslands are not considered to be a part of Candy Kingdom, especially in Princess Cookie, so it's not like she has dominion over them. Maybe it's since they're alleged to her? Okay, I take it back. Prince Bubba Gill may not be exploiting them in terms of love, but she is definitely exploiting them monetarily. I mean, these guys are morons, it wouldn't be hard. Pretty iffy there. Do you have any idea how much he's cried over you? Though a big point is in the episode You Made Me, which is pretty much Lemon Grab just being obnoxious and whiny as hell, and honestly, I kind of hate him. I don't blame her for anything with Lemon Grab. There's just only so much you can do with this massive man baby, and even then, he'll just screw himself over. You unload your punkest boys on me? What I really want to bring up is the fact that Prince of Gum, for some reason, installed security cameras everywhere and even in her citizens' houses. Which is a big... Why? I mean, it's been repeatedly shown that the candy people are too naive and stupid to commit serious crimes. Okay, maybe not all, but still. This extreme invasion of privacy is never acknowledged in this episode, let me make that clear. It just kinda comes out of nowhere, though at least it serves the plot regardless of its implications. And lastly, the smallest yet most infamous moment in the season 4 finale, this. Yeah, what the hell? I mean, we don't have any context for this, but are just cutting the limbs off these cute farming guys and then pacing them back on to see what happens. I mean, like, what can you say, but what the? Okay, so at least they don't seem to feel any pain, but they definitely have some level of sapience. It's some sort of experiment she's doing, but why? It's just so jarring and we get no explanation. But it's probably not going to lead Koreans to pretending having a god complex at all, I promise. But okay, okay. All things considered, all of those weren't that bad. She's definitely pushing some boundaries, but you can't really call her evil. Those years are trying to get some issues which aren't getting addressed, but it's not too bad right now. And then season 5 comes. Now here, the change starts to become super notable where she becomes especially standoffish, antagonistic, and just meaner. And she starts to actively do more bad stuff, mostly without repercussions. And it gets to the point where it's hard to even see them as the same character. But let me explain. What really marks the turn is the episode Wizards Only Fools, where PB out of nowhere is hell-bent on believing that magic doesn't exist, which in the line of ooh in an entire wizard city is the stupidest thing ever. Even though earlier episodes he actually respected Wizards of City's customs and did magic herself the freaking hypocrite. Finn, you know better than to ruin the sanctity of wizard battle! And Adventure Time is usually good at retcons, they even acknowledge it in this episode. Princess, since you have always been a dear friend to the wizard community... Yeah, until she got infected with a random characterization virus. Hey, what am I then? This don't look like magic to you? It looks like a mutation. I hate how she was right. But I guess later it was revealed that she herself is a magical being, so haha. -ha. That's not even the worst part. In order to get into Wizard City, she recorded herself getting the information from the Ice King, which involved her recording herself breaking Ice King's finger as he screams in pain. The password. Oh! My pinky! Password! No! Oh, oh, oh. What the hell? Inventing pretty much do and say nothing. What heroes they are! Hey, remember back in Season 1 where Pee was going to torture the Ice King and Finn calls her on it saying it's not right for her to do so and that she agreed and admitted it was a horrible thing to do? Well, now who cares? People can just torture this insane old man who at this point these two have grown much more sympathy for but if Pee does it, she can get away with it. And later on when they get caught, Bubblegum just needs a smaller pride for a moment to say wizards rule and they can all go. But she just refuses to and insults them and throws them all in prison. She is never called out on this, and never apologizes, or says she may have gone too far. And it doesn't even matter since they don't even use the magic cure and just force a normal one on Starchy, so what was the point of any of this? So yeah, PB was insanely unlikable and pretty much received no consequences, which you soon will see is a running theme. 
Then we go to Sky Witch, one of the earliest PB and Marcy episodes, and no, I will not go into the relationship, this video is long enough as it is. But yeah, PB gives us this gem. Raggedy Princess can make you a new hambo in like three seconds. Or Raggedy Princess can be your new hambo. She'd do it too. That girl's got like zero self-respect. Don't you go diss my girl Raggedy Princess, she is a wholesome cinnamon roll and I love her. Don't you give her that disrespect, she is pure unlike you. <laughs> That's mean. Don't tell her I said that. Yeah, you better. But yeah, I can't really see PB going to petty gossip about other princesses earlier in this series. Did he have a respect for them, even LSP? By the laws of my kingdom, I must honor the exchange of goods for legal tender. Oh sure, your kingdom's law respects a receipt, but breaking and entering, torture, incarcerations of innocence, genocide, and destroying the infrastructure of an innocent kingdom is just A-OK, -okay, right? But I'm getting ahead of myself. One notable thing is that we see in the episodes The Vault and James that Bubblegum is far older than she appears, being about 800 years old, and created the Candy Kingdom herself and all the inhabitants, which we do see is giving her practically a god complex. Since she created her kingdom from nothing and all the inhabitants, she pretty much believes she has full control of them, identities, and their fates. And this is even something to extend to other kingdoms where I feel like she has the utmost authority over them in their own kingdom, which I can't even tell you how that's problematic. But even in our own kingdom, it's disturbing how many times we see so many of our subjects like experiments, and those that can be easily replaced as seen with James. Honestly, why were they so worried about the candy people in the first episode? Just clone and replace them if you really wanted to. And also, we see with Goliad, who was effectively her daughter and heir, they were pretty quickly about to be destroyed and replaced as if they were a failed experiment. And this is seen in no worse a case than the episode Rattle Balls, where we see Long ago, in order to reinforce her security, she created an elite team of soldiers, perfectly able to stop any threat. However, they worked too well, and got into shady fight clubs against themselves. Seeing her soldiers go behind her back, PB immediately decides to terminate all of them. And they are all sapient, which is the reason why she decided to destroy them all, because she cannot completely control them, and their skills would prove a potential danger. And she did not think twice about it. What did that one lamp say? Oh, Ice King, to selfishly create life than destroy it. There is no crueler fate. Oh, you'll have a field day with her. Rattle Balls was the only survivor after barely breaking his programming and had to live in isolation in secret for hundreds of years. He begs Finn to not tell Bubblegum about his existence or else she will surely kill him. And then Finn does immediately. Ugh. It's pretty much because Finn's loyalty to PB is too much for him to ignore, but it's gotten so consistent that it's pretty much as a part of his character. Which is a huge problem since it will effectively let Finn enable Princess Bubblegum's actions despite his hero code because of it. So Princess Bubblegum can effectively do anything at this point and Finn will allow it and not speak out at all. So it just becomes a cycle of stagnation where the characters can't actually grow or develop at all. Which yeah, is a big problem. You think after the whole Nice King debacle he learned from blindly swearing allegiance to royalty? Talk garbage about PB one more time, bro. See what happens. Hold on one sec, PB. I gotta deal with the real tough guy over here. And yeah, despite living in peaceful isolation, Bubblegum immediately tries to kill him. And only after fending off her guards and explaining that he no longer craves violence and still has his allegiance to her, does she allow him to live in secret? Is she ever called on her genocide of her own creations? Of course not! Hell, when it's acknowledged later, she pretty much washes her hands of all consequences. Say, what happened to them rattleball boys? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, okay, you guys, keep up the good work! You see a running theme here? Thing is, if you do not call out a character's actions, you pretty much enable it. You pretty much go, there's no problem with it, and a character can't actually grow from it. It's written like it's acceptable and they'll keep doing it which kills characterization and growth and makes the audience pissed off that a character isn't developing from their bad choices. But hey, that's not all. In Apple Wedding, Tree Trunks and Mr. Pig are getting married. PB wants to officiate it, but Tree Trunks says she doesn't have the wedding authority. Which... She might be kind of right. I don't know, do royals have wedding vow credibility higher than a priest? She's going to let the King of Wu officiate it, which... Yeah, he has even less authority than PB. But PB takes it personally and breaks into his house to get the documents to prove he's a sham. But he did actually have the documents, so here at least he did have 100% the authority to officiate the wedding, and question if she broke into his house and home to steal his property. 
and Princess Baba Gunk just completely snaps and sends him to jail. Nope, 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 stop talking, go to jail. Oh. But for the first time, I think, in the series, she gets called out for BS as Tree Trunks could not stand this blatant abuse of power on her wedding day. And Bubblegum responds by immediately sending her and literally everyone else in the wedding, even Finn and Jake, to prison. Yeah, overreaction much? So Tree Trunks is forced to have her wedding in jail. And only then is Princess Bubblegum moved to actually free everyone she threw in jail. And if that didn't happen, who knows what. So yeah, PB completely oversteps her authority and threw innocent people in a dungeon because she had a temper tantrum because she was wrong. And she is not called out on this, nor receives any consequences. Well, except for True Joy's hitting her afterwards, but it's not like she cares. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Wait, don't, don't you think there might be cameras down here? I hope so. So yeah, this season had a pretty noticeable trend in Princess Bubblegum's actions. She'll be completely standoffish and unreasonable, then do something horrible and then never get called out on it, nor receive any actual consequences from it, so everything she's done is completely ignored. Nobody grows from anything, it's just frustrating to watch. If a character doesn't know if they did something wrong, then they can grow from it and develop like a character, and just go on with destructive acts as the world pretty much enables it. Which is why it's so important that a character can be called out on it and realize it. Like, imagine if Princess Peach was written normally as a dainty princess, but suddenly is written like a morally grey character who does atrocities and thinks nothing of the consequences, nor other people, but the game and all the characters still treat her like she did normally and nothing happened. It wouldn't work. Though in Odyssey she did steal Mario's vehicle and strand him on the moon, so maybe it's not too far off. But nearly all of what I said is just peanuts compared to what she does in Season 6. And with my actual most hated episode of the entire series, The Cooler. People say Frost and Fire is a series, what the hell were they thinking episode, and yeah, it's a jarring character change for Finn and leads to a controversial breakup, but at least that episode had consequences. At least that episode called out Finn and his actions multiple times. At least it led to permanent changes in every character involved. They didn't cop out on it. This episode can't even do that. The episode is about the Fire Kingdom going through a complete environmental crisis with the core cooling which is sickening, weakening, and even killing the citizens as their kingdom is being destroyed. With no other options, Flame Princess gets Princess Bubblegum to help her out and save her kingdom. She says she can't trust her, which is valid after everything she's done to her, but she has no choice to save her kingdom. And at least earlier, PB offered to help her not be such a danger to everyone, so it's not like they don't have any type of relationship. Princess Bubblegum convinces them to let her into their most sacred sanctum to save their kingdom, which Flame Princess explains houses the Fire Giants, the oldest and most sacred artifacts of the kingdom, and she believes she can use their power to save her kingdom as a last resort. And then PB behind her back starts to sabotage and depower them. What? Flame Princess notices this and sees PB actively sabotaging her kingdom, as PB pretty callously explains that she can't allow them to have such dangerous devices and be a potential threat to her kingdom. Flame Princess says pretty much what we're all thinking and that she has absolutely no authority on the kingdom or what they should have and attacks. But Princess Bubblegum uses her anger and power to destroy the other fire giants. Fire Kingdom has always been a threat to my realm. Not until this episode they were. So after actively provoking and firing upon Flame Princess until pretty much every other fire giant is destroyed, as PvD powers Flame Princess, Princess Bubblegum admits that this entire thing was by her. She sent the Ice King to cool the core, to completely cripple her kingdom and inhabitants, to intensely sabotage their ancient technology, and that she was spying on her kingdom to get intel. What the actual hell? No, like seriously, this was actually evil. She didn't even try to take any diplomatic approach to ally herself with the Fire Kingdom, she just went straight into sabotage. Why can't you just trust me? Cause you're a ding dong. And she didn't show an ounce of remorse for it. She did not care. You're cold, PB. Eh. She crosses the line this episode and crosses it hard. And what does she get in retribution for her little war crimes? It's because you are a bad person. That's pretty much it. But oh no, PB feels bad now. How dense are you? You think you commit actual atrocities against an entire kingdom and not think you're a bad person? Are you a genius or are you a dumbass? 
This did not deserve a, you you're a bad person. person. This deserves a, I am going to war with you, you pink psychopath. Because there is no justification to not to. She pretty much made an active assault on an innocent kingdom due to nothing but paranoia, and she deserves to reap what she shows. But no, the show's not gonna do that. It's not gonna commit. So all we get is, you're a bad person. But PB has the gumballs to say, Okay, keep one last fire giant. Oh, how generous of you, thinking you have literally a speck of authority over another kingdom. Also, considering you own just as many giant laser beam behemoths at your beck and call, you are an immense hypocrite. But hey, that's not all. I'm not a bad person. I want you to see that. I'm PB. I spy on everybody. No big D. Cold, PB. Did anyone even read this script? By the way, she never apologizes. She never says she's sorry about what she did. Or maybe she went too far. Or maybe that she even regretted that she had to do this. That's all we get. And what does she get after dozens of crimes? Reward it with a friend in Flame Princess. No, this is the fakest shit I have ever seen. You did not earn this. You did not earn this at all. This is the most forced resolution I have seen. I consider this genuinely bad writing. But hey, at least PB is learning, and she's not gonna spy on people anymore. I sure hope this won't be contradicted in a future episode. I mean, I would personally start with reparations for the kingdom you single-handedly ravaged, but hey, baby steps, baby steps. That's literally all we're gonna get from this, so just baby steps. Yeah, this episode is completely terrible, and it's my most hated episode of this entire series, and maybe one of my most of all time. But wait, you might say, Flame Princess's brother out of nowhere wanted to destroy the Candy Kingdom for literally no reason. Bubblegum actually did have a reason to do what she did. And I say, yes, that did happen. But counterpoint, this character hasn't appeared before this episode and isn't seen or mentioned after this episode. And this entire plot point is never brought up ever again in the entire rest of the series. So it's clear they were never even planning to commit to it. And it's just an insanely lazy way to justify PB's accent since it comes right out of nowhere and never comes back. So it might as well not exist. So to recap, Princess Bubblegum effectively used biowarfare on an innocent kingdom to weaken and even kill the inhabitants, used surveillance cameras to get intel on the kingdom she had literally no authority in, used it to betray the trust of people who thought she was there to help them, intensely went to the kingdom to sabotage the kingdom's most sacred and powerful artifacts needed to save it in the case of a catastrophe, and actively provoked and assaulted the leader of the kingdom. And for that, she gets called a bad person, stops surveilling people, which doesn't even last, and gets a friend. If this episode doesn't prove that the series will bend over backwards to avoid giving Bubblegum consequences for her actions, then I don't know what will. This episode made me genuinely hate PB, and I don't know how I can't. This is legit some of the worst character writing I have ever seen. It's like the show goes out of its way to make sure Bubblegum won't actually change or get called out. And what's even worse is that they don't really seem to care. The next episode is The Pajama War, which is like a slap in the face after watching The Cooler. And it's all about PB being cute and innocent in a slumber party. Oh look at her, isn't she cute? It's a silly thing. She can't be a bad person who does a silly thing. Look at her, it's so precious. Ignore the war crimes she did, she's so silly. Watching this gives the same tonal whiplash as Bambi's mom getting shot. Like, are you manipulating me or something? I don't know if this is an airing order thing, but it feels so jarring. And no, if you write a character this badly, you either have to give them genuine remorse and a character arc instead of just ignoring it and pretending like it doesn't happen. She needs to be called out. And no, not just, you you're a bad, bad person. person, like actually called out. But I think Adventure Time has a problem where no one really can call them out on it. Like really think about it. Ken and Jake are too loyal to call her out in her accents, as seen multiple times like I've shown, so they can't change her. Ice King is too insane and dense to even comprehend what she's doing. Marceline might actually, but the thing is they're so focused on pairing her up with PB that they can't actually do any serious call out and drama for what she's doing since he's in love with her. Lady Rannikar has been with her since forever. Bimo is way too unaware in his own world to comprehend anything. LSP is pretty much too as well. And even if she did, it's not like people would respect anything this conceited teenager says. So, who's left? Tree? Trunks? 
Okay, tree trunks it is then. Tree trunks shall be our vehicle to go and call out Princess Bubblegum on her cruel actions and incite meaningful change. And you can see why this can't work. Adventure Time kind of wrote themselves into a corner where every character at this point is written to pretty much just enable anything she does. The thing is, Adventure Time wants to have its cake and eat it too. It wants to make Princess Bubblegum a darker character with big character flaws and bad actions, but it still wants her to be the friendly princess ally they can use for most episodes. But you can't do that. You have to pick one. You can't have a character constantly do bad things and everyone just ignores it. It's like having pretty much two characters who can't actually coexist. I see people say, oh, you just can't handle a morally gray character, and fine. And so has done a few morally gray characters before. The problem is they don't treat her like that. As I said, pretty much everything Bubblegum does has no consequences whatsoever, and she still constantly treats as a friendly princess despite all of her crimes. Imagine if Martin, in every self-serving, manipulative action he took, was still treated as a great guy by everyone, regardless of his crimes that everyone ignores. That's PB. And at least Mart had a genuinely tragic fall from Grace saving his son, what's your excuse? At least Lemon Grab exploded after being a cruel cannibalistic dictator. Though he was put back together and people still treat him like a normal dude we're supposed to care about, despite him being practically evil in all appearances. Maybe a of Time's real problem is that they refuse to give royalty consequences for their actions. Except that you're King of Ooh, then you just die. But at least Lemon Grab's just a massive man baby. Hell, let's go count every time PB was actually called out by anyone. So, Tree Trunks didn't have a wedding, which she responded by imprisoning everyone. You You're a bad, a bad person. person! With Flame Princess, which we've gone over. Tree Trunks in a future episode, which again, she does not care at all. And, uh... Oh yeah, Marceline said she was kind of a dictator once. should say that you're kind of a dictator in a way. In one line. In a song. After the series ended. In a flashback hundreds of years ago, which can't contribute anything. You see the problem here? Okay, there is one more with the Veritas Brigade, which are a group of Candy Kingdom citizens who consider Bubblegum to be a fascist tyrant, which at this point she practically is. Now this can actually be really interesting. It might lead to actual consequences, so you know where this goes by now. It's only in two episodes and it's treated like a joke and is barely the focus, so again, no actual consequences. Of course. But moving on, the season 6 finale, Hot Diggity Doom, Princess Bubblegum finally received some consequences for her actions, since it's so that she made the candy people stupid on purpose so you can never have an intellectual rival. If she did, she'd probably kill them. And further, focuses her god complex. But because of that, they are easily tricked by the King of Ooze lies to elect him over her, and kick her out of the kingdom since they can't think for themselves. This is a real, if it isn't the consequence of my own actions moment, but it's nice to finally see something. So, for a bit of the series, he's exiled from the kingdom. But it does lead to the season 7 opener of Bonnie and Nettie, where we see Bubblegum's origin spawning from a gum hive mine. Look at her, I just wanna... Bonnie was curious and loved the outside world, where her brother Nettie was terrified and baby-like. But despite Nettie's underdeveloped nature, Bubblegum does love him and provide for him since he's all the family she's had. It's a sweet episode and kind of an allegory for living with a mentally disabled sibling. And it would be wholesome if it wasn't for this line. People get built different. We don't need to figure it out, we just need to respect it. You hypocritical bitch! You spent literally the entire series picking apart people in the name of science and manipulating them to be your vision of perfection. You literally engineered life to be stupid so you can follow your commands and make sure you have no intellectual equal. The first episode of this series was you manipulating life and death. You are the last person on the planet who should say this. You are only in this situation because you specifically engineer people to your whims. And this is done without any hint of self-awareness and irony. This is one of my biggest proofs that the writers really didn't know what they wanted to do with Bubblegum, since there's no way a character who does the exact opposite for the entire series would say this. If someone said that exact quote to her, she would argue with them. People get built different. We don't need to figure it out, we just need to respect it. Your heroic brain is fascinating in a scientific way. And yes, understand you in a very scientific way. Well, magic is science. You just don't know what you're doing, so you call it magic. And well, it's ridiculous. Her characterization is practically random at this point. Though, High Strange is probably the only episode where she actually apologizes for her accents and seems remorseful. 
I mean, I would prefer this happen in the cooler instead of- you You're a bad, bad person. person! And not in one of the most incomprehensible episodes of the entire series, but hey, I'll take what I can get. I'm not gonna count anything she does in Elemental, since even though she did do a ton of messed up things, she was driven insane by the Elemental energy, so I can't blame her for it. And besides, it was one of the inspirations for this year's Halloween era, so I can't get too upset. Though it does lead to the final arc of the series, which is bubblegum based. The Gum War. We get a flashback to Bubblegum's past before she made the Candy Kingdom and was alone with Nettie. Wanting a true family, she decided to engineer one. She creates three other clones of herself, Aunt Lolly, Cousin Chiclay, and Uncle Gumball. They work together to make what will become the Candy Kingdom, but Gumball takes matters into his own hands and wants to make his own Candy Kingdom. But Bonnie doesn't want him to as she wants to leave, and sabotages Gumball's plans to force her to do hers since he believes it's better. Though the thing to point out is that the episode frames both in the wrong, as both go behind each other's back to do what they feel is right. But the episode really makes Gumball as the bad guy, and also shows that he has the right to do what he wants as long as they have to do what Bonnie says. Though yeah, later on he does have to villain his plan to get Bonnie out of the equation, by making Elixir turn to a stupid candy person, and also backstabs the others. Though Gumball does bring up how technically they are equal, and she treats them like they're playthings. I don't get why they technically make a good point, but also make Gumball so cartoonishly evil you can't really do anything with it. In fact, you might say he's you a, bad, a bad, person. bad person. And of course, there's the last part where they're all turned to dump candy people, but they also show that she feels they're happier that way being stupid, and that they're pliable and she can command them. But they do seem happier now. So unburdened, and pliable. Oh, the crunchy ball! Dance for me! Sure! Again, really morally questionable, and of course never elaborated on. You just have to deal with it. It's also implied being like that is living hell, but who cares. But now that they're back, Gumball has committed to his plans and made his own kingdom, and plans to go to war. Though Finn, for like once, does try to talk Princess Bubblegum to not wage war against her uncle, and tries to convince Gumball to stop. Princess Bubblegum has made her bed, and now she must lie in it, but not get back up. I was wrong about you. You're nothing like Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie would never pointlessly incite war and attack a kingdom unprovoked. But Gumball is helping on destroying PB. After losing Peppermint Butler, she goes on all out war. Though in the finale, they present. Nah, man. She's wrong. This is all wrong. Even if she wins now, this is never gonna end. I can feel it. Too bad, it does anyway. Gumball has turned dumb again, and things pretty much revert to how they were. This could still happen again, but who cares? Nothing got really resolved, he's no longer a threat. And any of those questions earlier just become completely irrelevant. But okay, that's unfair. There is one moment where Bubblegum does apologize for what he went through as a candy person and stealing the candy kingdom from him. But it's undercut with Gumball immediately trying to assassinate her, so any moral points were just thrown out the window. Giant Space Baby shows up the end. So the cell pretty much ended with basically no resolution of the Princess Bubblegum's actions, problems, and she effectively never grew as a character. But wait, you may say, in this Atlantis she did change. She gave up her kingdom and distanced herself from the power and became a better person and stuff. Yeah, no, all of that is implied at best. You only get to see barely a glimpse of anything, and you can't resolve a character arc like that. After so many seasons of this, you can't just go, oh, she becomes better probably. That's not an arc, this is a statement. Literally anything could have caused that, or maybe something else, it's not actual development. Hell, maybe she got thrown out after another election, that's just as valid. And at this point, you need to actually commit to it, and they don't. Also, is Permanent Butler really the best character to rule in the big amount of time that's elapsed? He's one of the most evil characters on the show. How is he even here? Didn't he get dum dumbed? And Fiona and the Cake did pretty much nothing for her development wise. I've seen some people say her arc is like Iroh from Avatar, which like... How? For one, Avatar is a much more realistic take on warfare, and that's just an objective fact. You can't blame an entire war on one general. Second, most of his war actions are left entirely vague in the show, and you can't really say for certain what he did. And third, even if it's vague, the show does so Iroh has spent the rest of his life in remorse for his actions. He treats Zuko like his own lost son, trying to save him from his self-destructive nature, and repenting for his actions, devoting himself to a life of peace. He literally ends the series by him saving the city he once tried to conquer. So yeah, he still had a compelling character arc even if what started it was vague. In fact, that's actually a good comparison. 
While Iroh's actions are vague, the entire show is dedicated to his arc to repent and overcome it so it still feels satisfying. While Bubba Gum we see all the things he did wrong, but with the actual resolution to the arc left vague. So yeah, not really satisfying in the slightest. So, what are we left with? Look, I don't want to hate Princess Bubblegum, except of course he was a perfectly likable character in earlier seasons, and they broke out of the princess stereotype a lot with her. She's an active character, she can get her hands dirty, she can hold her own in a fight, she's incredibly inventive and hardworking and cares about her people and diplomatic matters. It's just, until they decide to make her a lot meaner and do horrible accents and basically no consequences is where things get a lot worse. But like... It's not all she is. As I said before, I'm mostly focusing on the negatives, but she's done a lot to help other people, like in the Lemon Hope episodes or in the Stakes miniseries. And hell, I loved her character journey in Jelly Beans Have Power, where she learns about her elemental powers. But everything I've talked about here has to be treated and addressed as well. But the show never wants to commit to it, and that's the problem. Princess Bubblegum feels like a character at odds with herself, and as a character we should like and look up to, despite the many horrible actions and traits that she has, they were just supposed to ignore and we can't do that. This is why I feel Princess Bubblegum is hated so much. If it got addressed mostly, it would probably go over better. But the show acts like you should like her regardless. It brings the questions it doesn't really bother to answer. And that pretty much leaves a bad taste in my and many other people's mouths. And it's not that it's like she's evil. It's like that it's like she's evil with no acknowledgement. And for a show like Adventure Time, which massively handles character lore, development, and arcs to make such beautiful plot lines, this sticks out like a sore thumb. Adventure Time is probably going to continue in some way or form, so it might have a chance to resolve this character arc. But with how they handled it, I'm not holding my breath. But hey, stranger things have happened in the land of Boo. Join me next time on my Adventure Time character analysis when I try to explain how tree tones went from this... Oh no, I'm just a cute little elephant. I'm not cut out for adventuring. ...to this. Do you all have any guns? Nope. Hey, I haven't done a credits like this in a while. I just want to say that I know this is a controversial subject and many people debate this. But hey, I'm open to being wrong. If you disagree and have your own point, tell me down below. Also, that tree touch thing is an actual idea. I don't know if I want to commit to it, but if you think I should, also let me know. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.